Solera webinar series presents PowerLink, inventory best practices to sell more parts. Hosted by Mike Sliger. Today we're going to talk about some inventory best practices in PowerLink. Today's webinar is tailored towards yards that are using worksheets printed in PowerLink. Another way to inventory parts on a vehicle is by using the inventory buddy. The inventory buddy has a PowerLink interface and is a handheld device that allows you to inventory parts, add descriptions, and take pictures as part of the inventory process. The inventory buddy handles all of the features we're going to talk about today. Whether you use the inventory buddy or prefer a printed inventory worksheet process, now we'll talk about how to improve your inventory part descriptions and workflow. We're gonna cover how to customize several inventory features today. First, we'll look at how to enter worksheet parts without using the 20 questions option. I have a vehicle stock number I want to inventory, so I'm gonna click on enter worksheet parts. I'm going to do an existing vehicle. I'll enter the stock number and find the vehicle. I'll click on next. Right here is the 20 questions button, but I'm gonna skip that and I'm gonna click on next. I'm gonna to go to a door. So I'm inventorying a front door and I'll select the driver's side. Once I do that down here in the conditions and options field, I'll type red comma four door comma LS trim level comma tan interior comma front wheel drive production date of 614 and it's a good door with no damage so I'm going to say triple zero to indicate that it's no damage or insurance quality. Now that took quite a bit of time especially if you're doing 50 or 75 parts on a, each vehicle. In a moment, we'll talk about how to speed up that using information from the 20 questions. Now, before we leave the inventory section, I'm gonna go back up here and I'm gonna to go to 560 wheels. Let's say I've got four good wheels on this vehicle along with a compact spare. If I click on the compact spare and I click on add, I get a message you've probably seen before. It says, do you want to make four individual records, each with a quantity of one? If you answer no, this will be saved as one record with a quantity of four. Well, to be honest with you, I don't want either one. I meant to click on the box that says quantity one expected one, and that's gonna ask me for that every time. So we're gonna talk about how to fix that in the part type manager. So do you wanna make four individual records, each with a quantity of one, if you read that first sentence, we're gonna go ahead and say yes. And so I just put in four spares. And so to slow me down, I've got to click on show inventory parts and I'll click on this one and I'll hit delete and I'll say, yes, I wanna delete it. And I'm not gonna go through and delete the rest, but you get the idea. So that's why you probably want to go back into, you want to go back into the inventory manager, part type manager and fix that. So we're gonna click on utilities up at the top and go to the part type manager. In the part type manager, there are several different fields that we're gonna talk about, but the reason we have to do this, you've got the message that says four, because if I type in 560 for my wheels, the expected quantity is set to four. That's the same for 570s wheel covers. I've got some other parts, my 327 exhaust manifold, my 447 axle, where they're set to have a quantity of two. And we're gonna change those to one because on a lot of vehicles, the left and the right are not interchangeable. So let's do the wheel, 560, and I'm gonna change that quantity to one. Even if I have four good wheels on a vehicle, chances are there are four individual parts that I'm gonna sell differently. I'm gonna have different conditions and options because one of the wheels is missing a center cap and one has a little curb rash and one has some scratches and one's perfect. So we're gonna change that to one and just inventory my wheels individually. I'm gonna save what I changed and we'll go back up here and we'll do the 570 and we'll change that one to one and we'll save that. We'll do the same thing for the 327. 
change that from two to one, save it, and we can do the same thing for the 447. There are others that are in there with, that have a quantity of two or four. It may be parts that you don't inventory, such as uh, some engine parts and some other drivetrain parts, but you can change that expected quantity to one anytime you're gonna have that message pop up and you don't wanna see that. Now I'm gonna escape out of the part type manager. And again, that was in the utilities part type manager section. Now in the part type manager, we've got some other things that you can do with individual part types. You've got the 20 questions section at the bottom left. Uh, this is one place where you can modify which of the 20 questions go to which part types. And I'm gonna show you another way in a minute, but this is one way to do that and see it broken out by part type instead of questions. The part type manager is also where you would set up warranties, text inserts, standard core prices, along with alias names that you can search by. The aliases are handy when you're converting from another yard management system or if you want to include aliases in a second language for your bilingual salespeople. We'll try to cover the rest of part type manager in a future video. Right now we're going to close this and we're still in the inventory section. We're going to go down to create worksheets. This is where we get the 20 questions originally. So I'm gonna to go to the compose worksheet tab, the second tab here on the screen. I'm gonna click on generate with 20 questions and I'm gonna pick a vehicle. I can put in a VIN if I've got one. I can just put in a year and model. Maybe it's not in my inventory yet. I haven't created the stock ticket record, but I'm gonna go ahead and inventory it. But in this case, we'll use that same stock number. And when I tab out of that box, it's gonna show me that 2014 Malibu. Now I'm gonna click on, I clicked on the 20 questions. I'm gonna click on add to list and it's gonna throw it down here in the bottom. You might be printing three, four, five worksheets at a time, but we're just doing the one. And then I'm gonna click on print. Now I'm going to cancel out of the actual print job because I've got an example open here on the screen. When we click on that, you see the 20 questions sheet that will print before the 20 to 25 pages on your worksheet. I've got spaces for a lot of the information in the stock ticket record. I've got the stock number, the mileage, the location, and so forth. Mainly what we're gonna talk about right now is the bottom half of this page, the 20 questions. Now, we're gonna customize these. We're gonna put in the answers that we want. And more importantly, we're gonna determine where those answers fill in information on your conditions and options screen when you're inventorying vehicles. Let's go ahead and escape out of this page, switch back over to PowerLink, and I'm gonna cancel out of here. Now, with the 20 questions, it's called 20 questions because you can apply up to 20 questions that you wanna answer, but we're gonna customize that. So we want the 20 questions to match information that we wanna capture, and we're gonna determine which parts get that information automatically. The answers you select in the 20 questions process populates the information in the conditions and options. The conditions and options details show up when your salespeople look up a part. And this is also seen by other yards if they find your part on Eden, our parts network. This information also shows up in your eBay listings if you're using our e-link listing tool. The conditions and options field is 36 characters long, so you want to make good use of this space. Now let me switch to my other PowerLink window that I've got open, and let's look at some examples of conditions and options. You've all seen this field, but let's talk about it. Um, these, this is a, just a motor for uh, this Malibu. Uh, most of them have a 2.0 indicating engine size or a 2.0L for liter. I've got the automatic transmission. I've got a 1013 production date. I've got a VIN check digit, and I've also got comments. You know, it's got a tiny crack, or it's got a, you know, tested and ran. You know, your people that are buying parts, they know they're getting a used part. So you want to show anything, any information that you want to go along with that part sale so there aren't any surprises when they get the part they think they ordered. So let's switch back over to my other PowerLink window. And we're going to define the questions we want answers for. So I'm gonna click on utilities at the top, 
click on 20 questions and answers editor. And this shows the 20 questions. These are preset on a new PowerLink system, but you probably inherited a set, set of questions from a previous user at your yard. We're going to customize the questions and answers. Keep in mind, these are just examples. Make the 20 questions match with how you want to capture information at your yard. First off, we don't have to use all 20. Because of that 36 character limit, we're going to, to control what we send over there because we want to have room for all of the details. So we're gonna uncheck any questions we don't wanna use. And in our example, we'll start down here at the bottom. We're gonna uncheck the roof type, the rear defog type, and the AC type. Now notice, whichever question is highlighted, the answers or the details show up here at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the outside color up here at the top. And I want to abbreviate these at the bottom. So I'm gonna click on blue and I'm gonna edit and I'm gonna change it to BLU. I'll hit okay. I'm going to do the same with black, edit, and I'll make it BLK. And I'm going to click on white, edit, WHT. In addition to that, I'm going to add one. So let's click on add, and I'm going to add one for tan, and click on OK. And I've finished with the outside color. Now, Let's look at the fuel control question. Most vehicles these days have electronic fuel injection, so we're gonna use this question for something else. I'm gonna click on edit, and I'm gonna call it production date. Uh, since a lot of vehicles have changes mid-year, especially with your uh, motors and transmissions, that production date is, almost, is always handy when you need to know when a a vehicle came out in the middle of the model year to know which interchange application will fit. So I'm going to hit OK. And even though I changed production date, notice at the bottom my answers are still there from when it said fuel control. So I'm going to delete the first one and I hit OK. And I'm going to delete the second one and I click on OK. The third one and the fourth one. Now I'm going to leave one answer in there because I want it to leave space on the page for me to write in the production date that I get out of the door jam on the vehicle. So I'm gonna edit this one and I'm just gonna type in a list of spaces, click on okay, and I've changed that. Now the other thing I wanna do is I wanna move production date up to the top with these arrows on the right hand side because that's pretty important. I want that to be first. So I'm gonna click on okay and I'm done in the utilities the 20 questions and answers editor. Now that we've done that, we need to determine which questions go to which parts. So let's click on utilities and questions and part types right under that. So when I'm in there, I can pick one of my questions and we'll just work with this production date question. Now we changed the answers on the production date. We deleted those old fuel control answers now we have to determine which part types the production date question will apply to. So the top box is everything that it's applying to and the bottom is every possible part type. So there's some of these that I'm gonna remove and I'm gonna hold the shift key if I wanna high highlight several at once and I can remove those, take those out and I wanna make sure I've got my transmission in there and I don't, so we'll go down here to the 400s. And I'll select my transmission, click on add. Uh, the 900s on there, that's good. Uh, let's do the 601 and the 604, the starter and alternator as well. So let's go down and find those. So again, we're determining whenever I inventory one of these part types, it's going to throw that production date in the conditions and options field. So 601 add, 604 add, and I'll click OK. Now that we've done that, let's go to the inventory section 
and we're going to enter some worksheet parts to see what we've done. So I'll click on enter worksheet parts and we'll go back in and we'll do an existing vehicle and we'll do that same one we were working on and find. I click on next. This time I'm not going to skip the questions box. We're going to go into the 20 questions. So I click on that and this shows the 20 questions field. The production date I'll leave. It's printed on my sheet with those lines, but I'm going to put in a date. So this is a uh, 02 of 13 production date. I'm using the tab key to move in between fields. If I have a vehicle that's one of these colors, I can select it from the list, but you don't have to only pick from the list. You can type. So if I type SLV because this car is silver, I could probably use the gray, but I want this one to show as silver and it is a four door and it is a, an LS trim level. Again, notice it's not in my list, but I just got the most common options in my list and I can type anything I want. It's a 2.0 liter and it is an automatic transmission. Most everything is these days, but we'll put that in there. It's a front wheel drive. And we're gonna stop there and click on okay. Notice the bottom, I've got not used inactive for those three questions that I unchecked earlier. My production date is at the top because I moved it to the top and we'll click okay and move on to the, back to the stock ticket record. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on next and it'll take me to my parts. Uh, let's put in that door. And when I click on the driver's side door, notice it populates that conditions and options field with the color four door LS trim level front wheel drive. So I'm going to click on add. Before I do, let's talk about pricing for just a second. You can put prices in now. Uh, you can go through and have standard prices set for different interchange numbers. You can put the prices in later but seriously consider as a best practice not to leave your prices at zero. I know a lot of times prices are, you price things on the fly when the salesperson's on the phone, but it's better to have a price if at all possible, because when somebody, another yard is looking at the results from an Eden search, if they see all the results, they're more likely to click on a yard that has a price because they at least know where they're starting. If they've got a zero, they don't know if you're going to be a lot higher or if you're going to be uh, lower because your part's not as good a quality. So price your parts whenever possible and just consider that a best practice. So now I'm going to go ahead and click on add and let's go, uh, let's, uh, let's type in, let's do a fender and I'll pick a fender. Again, it's picking up the conditions and options for all the parts that have that as a part type. Uh, let's go ahead and click add and let's do a 300. Normally you'll page three here clicking on next, next, next because you've probably done a good job of ordering your worksheet. So it only shows the parts that you want to inventory, but you can skip around by typing a number here and I'm going to pick a motor and we'll click on add. Before I click on add, let's talk about one other thing in the detail here. You've got your print tag box. You can click on that and then go into bulk maintenance and print out your tags. You've also got a privacy flag. So if you've got something that you don't want to go out on Eden, you could do that with a core motor. This is not a core motor, but you could use a privacy flag for a core motor. Um, I was at a yard recently that had a lot of walk-in traffic with Jeep parts and they got a lot of Jeeps in, but they said, well, I don't want to ship or wholesale Jeep parts. So any Jeep parts, they put a privacy flag on. They'll still be able for your salespeople to see, but that determines something will not go out on Eden. So that's what that privacy flag is for if you've ever wondered about that. Uh, let's go ahead and click on close here. At the end of this, you get a, a pop-up that says, do you want to review or add images to the inventory parts? I'm going to say no, but if you wanted to, you could say yes, and you could go in. Maybe you've got a uh, camera plugged into the computer, and you could attach images, or you've got a folder on the desktop where you've already copied in your images. Uh, something else I'll mention at this point, if you buy cars from IAA, 
We've got an import feature where you can import the VIN, other details, including the price you paid for it, and images as part of your inventory process. So that works if you've got a relationship with a, an, an IAA auction yard in your area. But right now we're going to say no to do anything with images and we're going to continue with cancel. So that is how to set the 20 questions and set what 20 questions you use and set what part types the 20 questions go to and set the expected quantities when you're dealing with part types that might have multiples such as wheels, wheel covers, the ones we talked about, axles, uh, exhaust manifolds. In a recent webinar, we discussed how to customize your inventory worksheet, including how to add parts you want to show up on the worksheet and remove parts that you don't include in your inventory. We also talked about how to change the order of parts on the inventory worksheet for when you want to inventory a vehicle in a certain order, such as when you walk around a vehicle without having to skip around on the worksheet and accidentally leave out parts. This recent webinar is now available on YouTube. Search for the phrase PowerLink Training and you'll find that video on our channel along with other PowerLink tips on video. Today we've talked about several ways to customize your PowerLink settings. Always remember that you can use the F1 key, F1 is your help key, for help in PowerLink to find out additional details on any PowerLink feature. And I'm, if I'm in utilities and I'm in the 20 questions and answers editor, if I'm on that screen, I can press the F1 key, it launches help. In addition to specific help for the screen that I'm on, on the right side of the screen here, I've got an index and search. Notice I've got some related topics. So I've got the dialog box and the universal options, top five, anything I wanna double click on, I can move to help for that topic. But use your help with the F1 key anytime you've got a question. In addition to getting help from the F1 key, I wanted to mention some other ways that you can get help. We have our online training center. We've got, uh, it's a, a website that you can sign up for. You'll have a login and you can, that's where you can get your PowerLink updates, information about those updates, and more details on any PowerLink features. Uh, you can call our support line. We'll have a slide at the end of the presentation that has that number. You can look for emails like the ones you got for the session today about future classes like these. I want to mention if there's topics you'd like to learn about more in this webinar format, put that on the survey when it asks for your suggestions. Something I like to mention at the end of every class that has nothing to do with inventory is backing up your data. So things happen, you know, whether it's a, a storm or something worse or uh, like the yard I went to one time and a disgruntled employee had broken in from a week before when he didn't turn in all his keys and he actually stole the server. No matter what happens, if something happens to your PowerLink system, you can replace your PCs and you replace your server, but you have to be, be able to restore a copy of your data. You can't buy your data. You wouldn't want to have to re-inventory your yard or lose years of valuable sales data. Contact the help desk if you're not sure how to get a local backup of your PowerLink database, but please have your PowerLink data backed up on a flash drive or an external hard drive. You want to make sure you've got your PowerLink database and your images out of PowerLink. You know, if you get a new server, it's easy to reinstall Windows, whether it's Windows 10 or Windows Server, but that data is key and you've got to have a backup of that. Now we'll try to answer any questions that you have submitted. So our website is hollandersolutions.com, but here's the link to the website, my.hollandersolutions.com. If you haven't logged in there before, you'll be asked to register. You'll get an email within 24 hours that tells you to uh, that gives you your, you know, your username and password have been approved. You'll be able to log in and again, find out about updates, power link features, things like that. I hope you learned something today. Thanks for your time. And we'll see you next time on another one of these exciting training sessions. Thank you for joining us today. To learn more about Hollander and PowerLink, go to www.hollandersolutions.com.